Well, thank you, Misha, and the uh, team at Precious Metals for inviting Walbridge to present our company. Uh, I'll be making forward-looking statements, uh, and uh, please uh, read our disclaimer on our website. We've been actively exploring on our Fenelon Gold property uh, since the purchase of that in 20, late 2016. It was a 10 square kilometer prop land package that we purchased from Balmoral Resources and since then we've had successful exploration program. We've also consolidated the land package along this underexplored belt by the acquisition of Balmoral Resources which com was completed in the May of this year. We now control over 900 square kilometer of this uh, along this belt, over 90 kilometers strike length of this. And this belt is an underexplored belt that hosts several large gold systems, as is evident from the Ditchu Lake Mount on the Ontario side, our Fenelon Gold on the uh, eastern side, as well as our Martinier in between. In terms of investment criteria, uh, there are certain criteria that people look for. One is the property itself, one is its location, management and their track record, just to name a few. So let's zoom in on the Fenelon and let me explain why we believe it has a multi-million ounce potential and what the property is. We've so far identified about four large mineralized systems on the property. The Gabro zones on the north part of the property were really the focus of previous owners as well as Walbridge in 2017 and 2018. These are uh, uh, large shear zones, high-grade, multi-you uh, know uh, veins that are uh, perhaps double-digit grades, double-digit meters. This is also where we completed our bulk sample in 2018 and early 2019. Another mineralized system was uh, discovered in late 2018, 2019, and that was the Area 51. And following up on Area 51, we also discovered the Lower Tabasco and Lower Cayenne corridors within the sediments. And since the purchase of the property, we also have the uh, Reaper Ripley zone that was discovered by Balmoral in late 2019, early 2020. And we're now focusing on trying to follow up on the extensions of these mineralized zones on our own from Fenelon property down to the uh, newly acquired land. The Gabro zones, as I explained before, these are high-grade shear zones. We completed a bulk sample of roughly about 33,000 tons of 18.5 grams a ton, uh, with excellent recoveries of over 98%. It was tow milled at a, uh, at a nearby mill facility. What was important about this is we did this bulk sample in order to understand the bulk mineability of some of these zones. There were some triple-digit grades over several meters that we wanted to see the continuity as well as the recoverability of these zones. Uh, as you can see in this table, the average stope size was roughly about 4,500 tons and ranged from 10 grams a ton to about 38 grams a ton with excellent recoveries. Late 2018, early 2019, we followed up on some of the geophysics in the magnetic low areas which typically show structures and we discovered this area 51. These are very similar to our Gabro zones except for the fact that they're actually surrounded by disseminated gold. This Area 51 uh, was followed up in early 2019 and since, and we also discovered the lower portions of our Tabasco Cayenne zones. Tabasco Cayenne zones are these uh, shear zones that are within the sediments. In the upper portions of the sediments, because they're in more of a ductile environment, they're narrow but still high grade, but about 350, 400 meters down to so far tested around 900 meters, they seem to expand in width as well as in grades. And you can see in here that you've got grades of 48 grams over 20, 48 meters of 22 grams a ton and 9.7 meters of 32 grams a ton. Now, just in terms of size perspective, it's good to know whether these, you know, why, why do we mean that it is a multi million ounce uh, property? This is just a long section through one of these shear zones, the Tabasco. You can see, as I mentioned, this uh, deposit or this part of the zone essentially gets a little richer and wider from about 350, 400 meters. We've tested this down to about 900 meters. Just in terms of size, this is 600 meters strike length down to about another five to 600 meter vertical. The average true thickness in this zone is about 10 to 12 meters. 
And the weighted average grade of all of the assays so far is about eight to 10 grams a ton. So that's, that's sort of doing the math gives you the size potential of this one shear zone. Just about 100 meters to the north of this Tabasco zone, we've got the Cayenne zone. You can see in here, this Cayenne on the, on the right hand side, you can see this a long section through that Cayenne shear zone. And in the background, you can see in the hatched areas, that's a Tabasco that I just showed you in the last slide. This Cayenne, again, in the upper areas has these narrow high grade uh, shear zones, but as it gets to depth, it seems to do the same behavior as our Tabasco, as you can see from the grades of 11 meters of 17 grams a ton and 15 meters of 24 grams a ton in here. Our focus this year obviously is to follow up on, on this Cayenne zone as well <clears throat> in order to uh, demonstrate its size potential. So we talked about the Area 51. Area 51 veins are these are east-west. Uh, veins that are pretty well in the same direction as the Sunday Lake Deformation Zone. They, uh, they, we've so far identified about 28 veins within this, this Area 51. And, and as, as, as I'll explain, that we actually see the continuation of those down to the surrounding land package that we purchased from Balmoral. Uh, so these Area 51 veins have the optionality for us to be able to look at them from an open pitable type of deposit, deposit because the, at surface, they, uh, they have these large, wide, mineralized uh, zones, but also because it plunges to the northeast, we also see the optionality of being able to look at this from a high-grade underground resource as well. Here, I show on the left-hand side of the figure, you can see that the mineralization in Area 51 at surface, you can see the optionality for an open pit, but as it goes down to 500 meters, which is the, the, to, the, to the right side, you can see it's very close to our Tabasco and Cayenne shear zones. So in terms of a production profile, we'd be able to mine a bulk mineable sort of a scenario out of the Tabasco and Cayenne, but with very little infrastructure, we'd be able to also uh, take advantage of selective mining out of these high grade uh, zones in the area 51. These are still high grade. We have 3.88 meters of 20 grams a ton or four meters of 19 grams a ton. And so, so, so from a mineability, it certainly can add a lot of ounces to that production profile in the Tabasco zones. Now I talked about the fact that we're trying to expand the footprint of the existing mineralization that we've so far identified on our own Fenelon property. So after the purchase of Balmoral in late May of this year, we actually mobilized some drills and we've been drilling on the, prop, uh, on some, on, on the Balmoral's new ac or the acquisition from Balmoral and, uh, and, and, and followed up on some of the discoveries that they had in the Reaper and Ripley zone. We just announced uh, you know, in the you know in the first week of September, that uh, we have now identified that these Area 51 mineralizations continue down towards the discoveries of Reaper and Ripley zone. This basically opens up the entire Jeremy Diorite boundaries, if you may, of roughly about 1.8 kilometers uh, in strike length of these Area 51 veins. Of course, it requires a lot of follow-up but it certainly shows a potential for a large open pitable type deposit, as well as also being able to look at it uh, in the depth from a high grade underground uh, mineability. More importantly, we see that the Tabasco corridor, for example, is at the contact of the Jeremy Pluton at depth. So our focus also will be to continue following that Tabasco and Cayenne along that contact to see if they continue down to the Sunday Lake Deformation Zone to the south, which would be definitely, again, additional uh, growth potential for this deposit. So I talked about the property and I explained the potential for a multi-million ounce uh, gold deposit on, on, on the Fenelon. Let's talk about the location and the jurisdiction. This is not in the Northern Andes or in the middle of West Africa. This is in Quebec. Quebec is a very mining friendly jurisdiction with good First Nation communities that are economic development friendly. Uh, it has excellent road and, and infrastructure. As you can see in here, there's a provincial road that connects the, to the prop, near the property from Lassar and to Amos. And there is a 22 kilometer road that we maintain right to our property. Power line is only about 20 kilometers from the, uh, from the site. So we talked about the property. We talked about the location. Talk about, let's talk about management's track record. A lot of people talk about management's past track record. We like to focus on our current track record. 
We purchased this small 10 square kilometer land package for 3.5 million dollar Canadian in late 2016 and we believe that we're going to be able to come up with our maiden resource for an underground high grade deposit by next year this time. So in less than five years we've been able to go from the discovery of these areas in Area 51 and the Tabasco Cayenne corridors to a resource. That's pretty, that's pretty good and we also have now as a result of the consolidation of the land package by the acquisition of Balmoral control this entire belt that has already shown at least three large gold systems which one of them we are focusing on uh, which is the Fenelon but more importantly there are other properties uh, such as the Martinier which is already showing a large gold system with that would be a secondary focus of the company. All of these criteria are good for investment but what's important is you need to have an an exploration program and good results. Uh, we certainly have an aggressive exploration program this year of over 100,000 meters and you, most of the that, that 100,000 meters essentially is going to be within this small box in here which is basically the areas around the Area 51 Tabasco Cayenne zone that we uh, talked about and the balance of that would be more of a regional exploration but the majority of the regional exploration will be certainly focused on continuation of our zones down to the newly acquired lands from Balmoral following up on the, uh, on the recent press release that we had with respect to the Area 51 mineralizations and also the Tab Tabasco Cayenne corridors. So we talked about the property, the location, the management and the exploration program that we have. I think all of that is also coupled for Wabridge with supportive shareholders such as Eric Sprott and Kirkland Lake Gold. Eric Sprott owns about 21% of the company, Kirkland about 8% and more importantly, we have over $40 million Canadian in the Treasury that we'll be able to carry this year's program and uh, well into next year. And depending on the review of the additional drilling that we may require in order to extend the current mineralized environment within the Fenelon down to the Sunday Lake Deformation Zone, as a result of our recent press release, we'll be reviewing that and figuring out whether, uh, you know, what sort of a program we need for next year and uh, determine the fund requirements for that as well. So we check all the boxes in respect, with respect to the property, location, management, uh, catalyst in terms of exploration and results, and supportive shareholders and access to capital. And uh, those are all the reasons we believe investment in Warbridge continues to be value creative to the investors. Thank you.